This is a program that discusses issues of faith for people looking for answers. This is Viewpoint with Bob Placey. We've had experts on Viewpoint say the transgender movement is one of the most challenging issues the church is facing. Well, today we'll find out how our church is trying to navigate those difficult waters to make an impact for Christ. But first, Brexit, North Korea, Hong Kong, China, are we a step closer to Armageddon? Rod Hembry is the host of Bible Discovery TV. I want to get his viewpoint of where we are in the Bible timeline and also where does the United States fit in? And this is not only a, a history book, no, but it's a future book. It's, it's very it's, much it's, a future it's book. It's a future book, and, and we want to talk about that today, because you yeah. look at the news, look what's happening in the news in the Gaza Strip, and you look yep. at the, the attacks against Israel, yep. and Israel's what, six million people? I don't know, yeah. there's not very few, nine million maybe, but, but <laughs> the, only, the only nation that is around right now, it's in the Bible. Israel is the nation that mm -hmm. we share a planet with today, and it's exciting yeah. to be alive right now, to witness what God is doing, because Israel is the one reason that I tell people we are in the end times. And they say, well, how, you've always yeah. said that. I said, no, no, Israel is here now. We're in the end and times. And it's blossoming, blossoming. And, and look for that fruit. It's yeah. come, I mean, we, I've been, the first time I went to Israel was 91. And uh, that's before they had the different walls up and mm -hmm. all of that. Mm -hmm. And I want to tell you something. Over the next several years, things took place. And last time I was in Israel was two years ago. And I've been to Israel several times. And I have seen the growth it's been unbelievable. Desert places, they took the sand away and washed it, brought it back and planted all kinds of things. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm reading Ezekiel and I'm thinking, oh my yeah. goodness, Lord, what is this? You know, 37, the dry bones are coming to life and things are happening. And uh, you look at it, you begin to understand, okay, so God is doing something here. So the question is, what comes next? Yeah. And as we watch Israel, I mean, is, is it, we look at what's happening in the Gaza Strip even, even now. Absolutely. And the, the battles that are going on and, and how more and more people are leaning that way, leaning towards the Palestinians and leaning away from Israel. What do you see happening in prophecy right now? Well, to, I mean, to be honest... Because we, we watch Israel if we're going to watch prophecy. Yeah, it, of course, of course. Watch Jerusalem, watch Israel. I think Ezekiel 38, uh, this is exactly where we're at. I think we're going to be... You know, I could be wrong, yeah. but I... Expound on that, because we've got a well, whole lot of people watching, including me sometimes. <laughs> Ezekiel, I better look that up. The word of the Lord came to me, son of man, face Gog and Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. Prophesy against them and say, this is what the, the Lord, Lord says. says. Look, I am against you, Gog, chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. I will turn you around and put hooks in your law in your jaws rather and bring you out with all your army including horses and riders mm -hmm. this is the beginning of what we're going to see i think that we're waiting any minute uh, any day any week any month for that to begin to take place and so we'll begin to see it i i don't know what will happen how it will take place uh, in terms of the details but I know that it's going to happen. And we've heard more and more rhetoric internationally about the destruction of Israel, especially yes. coming from certain nations in the Middle East, that we've got to destroy Israel. They don't, they don't deserve to be there. You hear more and more of that, and that rhetoric is being ramped up. It is. Good luck. Mm -hmm. If they try <laughs> to destroy Israel, good luck. I mean, yeah. Israel is, is a nation that God himself has said, listen, I'm coming back to Jerusalem. And so get that ready. You know, Psalms 122 tells us, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We have to pray for Jerusalem and the peace of Jerusalem because you know what? God's coming back there. And you know, every eye will see him. Mm -hmm. Everybody will know who it is and everybody will say, okay, you're Lord. And that's going to begin a very interesting time. Yeah, that, that timeline that starts from that point exactly. on. Exactly. The armies from the north. and Exactly. The, so what, where do you see us in this, in this timeline? I mean, so where I, I know see... Everybody says tell me what's going to happen. Well, but you, you, you know what's going to happen. You do. It's, it's the timing of that and, and, and the time between these events. That, that's, that if that's I knew exactly the time, yeah. <laughs> I would be a millionaire. Yeah. <laughs> More than that. I can only speculate and my, my speculation... Yeah. I mean, as you look at the timetable, as you, as you look at the Bible. Right. My speculation is it seems to me that we are in the place where we're waiting for... And if, by the way, if you go to Jerusalem and just go straight north, you run into Moscow. Yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. Coming I'm down from the north. Just saying. They're going to come down from the north. And there is an interesting buildup here. And there's an interesting 
gathering here and with, with the alliance of Syria and all of that happening, I see that soon it's going to take place where they're going to come down and try to squelch mm -hmm. Jerusalem. Now, I don't know, it seems to be that the war of Gog and Magog seems to be uh, a thing that, that goes twice, it goes once and then it goes again at the end, but the idea is that I believe that we are in really close to, I believe the rapture of the church, really close to the, the time when Israel is going to be threatened and really close to, to the everything well, happening. Let's hold that point because you said a word that's got a lot of people's ears. It does. The, the rapture is not right, mentioned right, in the Bible. Right, yes, yeah. it is. But we want to talk about that. Okay. We're going to take a break right now. We'll be right back after this. Our culture is moving away from a biblically based lifestyle faster than ever in history. Even many believers struggle to explain their own viewpoint on who Jesus really is. God says in the Old Testament that my people are destroyed by a lack of knowledge. That's why TV44 created Viewpoint with Bob Lacey, a program that discusses biblical issues and how they relate to our culture today. Now in our second season, Viewpoint is hitting more topics head on than ever this year. Every Viewpoint program is produced without any commercial advertising, so no topics are off limits. But we couldn't do this show without the support of our financial partners. Maybe you've never supported a Christian media ministry before, but in today's world, our message is needed more than ever, and it only takes a minute to give. Go to WTLW.com and click Get Involved, then Donate. Your gift of $20, $50, or even $100 will help continue the outreach of TV44's Viewpoint program to impact your hometown and the world. I am back with Rod Hembury, and before we went to break, you threw out a word there that just causes all kinds of tribulation in some Everybody people. gets upset when about you say that. say the word rapture, because we're talking about prophecy right now. We're talking about the, the nation of Israel, the only nation that God ever really gave to anybody in the nation of Israel and prophecy. And you, we've gone through this timeline, all of a sudden you mentioned the rapture of the church. There's a lot of people out there who have no idea what you're talking about, and, <laughs> but there's people who are, have a real misconception about what you're talking about as they well. They do. Uh, first of all, as you Go read... Thessalonians. Just, if you, yeah, <laughs> as you just read the Bible, mm -hmm. just read it, and just listen to it. Don't project into it what so-and-so said or so-and-so yeah. said. But if you just read it and listen to it, the word catching up, which is where catching rapture up comes and taking from. Away, yeah. yeah, the mm -hmm. harpazo in the Greek. Mm -hmm. Um, is covered, of course, in the time of Enoch, who walked with God and was not for God, took him, mm -hmm. okay? And it also comes in the time of Elijah, when he was right. taken up in the horses. He was caught up in the horses, or harpazoed up into the, the, the horses and the chariots of Israel. So rapture is in the Bible, uh, but the word rapture, yeah, of course, isn't, yeah. but the meaning of it is in the Bible. And uh, what I think is important is that we understand that the falling away will come first. Now you go to Matthew chapter 24 and you read it mm -hmm. and you see that God is talking to us and you begin to understand what he said. This is Jesus Christ. This is God. This is, this is the Lord. Okay, so he's saying something else. The disciples come to him and they say, when will the end of time be? When will it be? Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Don't you want to nice hear what quote, Jesus yeah. <laughs> says? Okay, so he says to them, he says, watch out that no one deceives you. First words, mm -hmm. watch out that you're not, not deceived. deceived. Look for truth. So now we've got a lot of people in the church who are going here, going there, yeah. fighting about mm -hmm. it. Paul said, comfort one another with these words. We're not comforting one another, we're fighting about it. So, okay, let's, let's look at this. Watch that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, mm -hmm. I am the Messiah, and they will deceive many. You are going to hear of wars and, and rumors mm -hmm. of wars. Okay, that's mm -hmm. important to hear. See that you are not alarmed, because these things must take place. Very important but the end is not, not yet. yet, okay? You're so gonna hear these things. You're gonna, and we do. Right. Every day. We hear them, wars and rumors of war. For nation will rise against nation, political nation against political nation. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus says, and kingdom against kingdom. kingdom. That word is a word that means spiritual kingdom. The, yeah, it's not a country. It's not a country, right. kingdom <laughs> against kingdom. So now you've got, okay. You've, now you've got, a, you, you've got it on a spiritual level. You've you're got it on a spiritual you're, level. You're outside the physical, you're into the spiritual That's realm. right, exactly. He says, there will be famines, earthquakes in various places. Mm -hmm. So what that means is places that you don't see it before, famines and earthquakes, and earthquakes we have seen. All these events, are to take place. These are the beginnings, Meanings. the beginning of birth pains. 
So we have some of that. He goes on, then they will hand you over to the persecuted, to be persecuted. The persecuted church mm -hmm. is a big thing of mine. I want to tell you right yeah. now, there are more people and persecuted today than ever yeah. in the history of the yeah. church. And we want to get into that. I think that's yeah. going to take a whole segment, but I, you're right. When you, yeah. when you look at what's going on around the world right now, and nobody's reporting on it, Christians are fair game. Unbelievable. But you look at these signs of the times again, and, and, and when they said uh, good will be called bad and bad will be called good. Black of course. Will be called, you know, and, and you look at what's happening in, in, in the media, what's perpetrated on children in their indoctrination days of schools. Of course. And we're trying to accept more and more things as normal, which really aren't in God's plan. They aren't normal. So, I mean, so prophecy is being fulfilled right before us, and people can't grab a hold of that fact that prophecy is being fulfilled. Watch the news, read the newspaper, see what's going on. It's happening and then look, right yeah, now. And then, and then, then, look, then at, look at the word. This is the problem. They don't, they're not looking at the word. Right. They're not looking at what mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, God the Almighty has right. said about it. Now, we don't just look at Israel. I mean, no. Israel is the, the focus of this. But can we look at the United States and see prophecy being fulfilled? Everybody asks me, you know, what, what, you know, the United States has got to be in prophecy. Well, actually, uh, the richest nation ever. What? Well, yeah, I, it? I think did, it's did the, God care about the United States? Yeah, the world's largest economy and all of that. But you know, when I go to Washington, and I, I've been there many times, when I mm -hmm. go to Washington, I look around at the, uh, you know, the Lincoln Memorial, and I look at all these, and I see things that are interesting, <laughs> like I see Roman pillars. Yeah. Because if you've been to Rome, you see a lot of the you same thing. You see things. a lot of the same thing. Yeah. And I see monuments to war, monuments to victory, monuments to, to men. A lot of Roman stuff happening, a mm. lot of stuff happening. In fact, the world's largest economy is in America. And it's important for us to recognize that it's an extension of the Roman Empire. Roman Empire never really died, it just slowly it faded. faded. It faded and was, was just replaced and taken exactly. over by the Huns and different, yeah. Exactly. And look at our allies, the UK. Canada and all that, they're, they're all part of the mm -hmm. Roman Empire. And so I think that when you talk about, by the way, the eagle is mentioned uh, in the Bible, but not as a U.S., you know, we, we took the eagle as our goal so, yeah. in the U.S. Uh, our, thank goodness it wasn't the turkey. Yeah, exactly. We, <laughs> we took the eagle from the Bible. But see, we follow God. God has already shown us the eagle in the Word. So it, God didn't follow us. Mm -hmm. We followed right. God. So that's important for Americans, which I am well, one of them, to know. Sure. And for the audience, where's the eagle in the Bible? Yeah, of course. Well, it's in the, the, the prophets, of course. Mm -hmm. and, uh, there. But the important part of, of uh, but you're right, but the important part of this, the Americans, they're, they're essentially the extension of the Roman Empire. So what's going to happen is there's going to be a falling away first. There's going to be something that takes place. And then back to the word, the rapture. This is interesting, mm -hmm. the catching up. It seems to be, because Jesus talks about it here, how one man will be in the field, the other will be in the field, but he'll be gone. Yeah. Uh, and the, about the women who are grinding, one's there, one's not there. What is he describing? Mm -hmm. He's describing something that happens in Thessalonians in the twinkling of yeah, an yeah. eye in Corinthians, Ooh. gone, suddenly, just like that. Yeah. And so it what could have happened right there. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah. exactly. That quickly. So, so there seems to be a calling away. And then the Bible says the Antichrist will not be revealed unless that who is called away is taken out so that he can come in. So I believe, personally, that as believers are called away, that what will happen is it will open up and the Antichrist will vacuum. come in. Exactly. Yeah, a spiritual and there will be a lot of people gone and they'll have to figure it out. So that's, that's what I mm -hmm. think. Now, I could be wrong, but I'll explain it to people as we go up in the rapture what happened. So, anyway. <laughs> and the scary part about that for some people, especially if people have been in the church their whole life. I mean, you said you were in the church, you knew how to get saved, you knew all these things, but it wasn't until you were 14 years old. You were raised in the church. I was raised in the church. I didn't know until I was 12 years old how to really get saved. There are people that have been in the church their whole life. They're going to see that happen, the twinkling yeah. of an eye. Yeah. What's, what's their situation? Well, I think I mean, that there's people out there that are scared to death, but they don't know what to do about it. Paul said, comfort one another with these words. Mm -hmm. He didn't say scare, scare them to, to death, death with these yes. words. And there are many preachers who used to scare us to yeah. death. And I don't know that Hellfire that was and a, brimstone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that that was the way yeah. to do it. But we need to understand that God is, has made a promise and he will keep his promise. And he takes us away. And I think that we have to comfort one another. We have to understand that mm -hmm. when we are gone, we're not just gone, but we're with Jesus Christ. Right. Suddenly we see the eyes of Jesus Christ. That's different now. 
if I'm going to see the eyes of Jesus, as a Christian, as a believer, when I leave this body in whatever form, I go and I, I see the eyes of Jesus Christ. That's, in, that's incredible. That's incredible. That's important. That's and so we need to remember that. And that's what I would say. And also, you know, remember, comfort one another with these words. For those that are left, does all hell break loose? Essentially, three and a half years of what seems to be peace um, mm -hmm. comes to an end when he sets up. What happens is he comes in, and you can imagine if suddenly there's a bunch of people gone. You know, a billion or two billion people gone it's out of Holy, seven. The Holy Spirit? Gone. Gone. That's incredible. Can you imagine a world that doesn't I have the Spirit of Christ? don't want to be here. I don't want to be here. Either. And, but I have family members, and I pray for them every day. Mm -hmm. And I know that God answers prayer. So I know that if we pray for our family members, there will be people who come to know the Lord during the tribulation because they will see and understand exactly what God is doing. And they'll say, wait, what Rod said was right. Here we go. So they will understand. And in Revelation, it tells us that they will be on, suddenly on the sea of glass. So God will take them because they were, you know, whatever, beheaded, taken away, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but God will take care of them. And I think that uh, we need to rest in knowing that. See, the Lord didn't come to judge us. God didn't say, I'm going to judge you. He's not a person who's judging. But God cannot tolerate sin because he's holy. That means complete. Mm -hmm. Sin is, emanates from Satan. And when we sin, we brought it in our, our physical, mental psyche. God heals our mental and he restores us. Our physical is still troubled. And that's why we pass away. But God himself came to save us. God so loved mm -hmm. the world that he gave. He loved the world and gave his only begotten son. He loved so he gave. So that those who believe will not perish but have everlasting life. So that's why God came. That's why he's here. But we have to make him Lord of our life. And that's the hard part. That, that, that can be very, very <laughs> difficult for somebody who's very self-centered. You do this on a daily basis, and people just got a touch of this. Some of the people in the audience right now on YouTube or someplace have just gotten a touch of, of talking about prophecy. You go through this Bible every year. How can they find it? Go to BibleDiscoveryTV.com, and, mm -hmm. and we'll, you, you can get a guide, a Bible guide, and we'll take you through the Bible. It's real simple and real basic. That's how they find it. Actually, if you find your Bible, go and you probably have a Bible in your home. Blow the dust off it. Most you know, Americans do. Wipe it off. Okay. Open it up and begin to read it. Mm -hmm. Just start reading. Yeah. By the way, you, you start reading from the beginning, not the end. So don't just read one mm -hmm. section and stay with that one section. But read the whole read Bible. Read the whole thing. And they can do that with you on a daily basis. They can do that with us on a yeah. wheel. We'll take them through the Bible. <laughs> Write for your Bible guide and we'll give it to you. And Or if they yeah. want to give on the internet, they get a PDF file. So okay. they're good. Great. Rod, it's been great having you. Thank you Good very to be much. Here. Recently, a nearby church had to have a serious policy discussion with its staff regarding a high school student who just came to Christ. The student identified as a male when he'd been born a female. Now, these are issues churches will be dealing with within the current gender-neutral culture. Daniel Fusco pastors a church in the progressive area of Vancouver, Washington, and he's our go-to pastor when issues like these come up. I asked Daniel how his church is trying to stay in front of this issue. Something that's in the news constantly right now, and, and we're dealing with it here, but you've been dealing with it probably longer out there on the, on the West Coast, is how we deal with the whole issue of, of transgenderism in the church and uh, how we deal with, with people who don't identify as male or female, they're non-binary. Uh, have you guys run into any of this yet? Yeah, I mean, you know, here in the Pacific Northwest, I live just north of Portland, Oregon. Um, this is just a normal uh, life for us uh, in the work of ministry. And so, yeah, it's, it's very common uh, here in our area where we live. And as a church, uh, we have people who are part of Crossroads who, you know, are, um, who, who have questions about their identity and all of those things. So, so how, do we, how do we deal with that if we're in, a, uh, say, a, a youth pastor and we have a, 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 someone come into our, our youth group to receive Christ. They, uh, they don't identify as, as either one or they were male, born male, and now they identify as female. How do we handle that, that situation, the particulars of it, in something like a, a church camp or an overnight stay or something like that when, when the parents are upset about it? 
Sure, and, and that's a, such a great question. So we always have to bring every one of these specific uh, examples back to a question of the gospel. What is the gospel? And so the gospel is simply that uh, each one of us, no, you know, with all different sets of issues, each one of us are broken. Each one of us image bearers of God, but but warped by sin, some of our own doing, some of you know uh, things that we've experienced over time. And Jesus meets us right where we are, right? And he redeems us. And then he brings us on a journey of transformation that culminates when, uh, when he brings us home with him uh, to heaven. And so, you know, it's an honor, I would say, for any church to have anybody, no matter what their areas of sin, brokenness, confusion is, to have them wanting to walk with a community in the name of Jesus. So no matter what it is. And so I think it's always important that all of these discussions, we put it in the context of the gospel. Now, it, it, with that being said, in the case of somebody who, you know, maybe they're biologically male, but they uh, but they want to be seen as a female or biologically female or they're non-binary or whatever it is, you know, that makes, unfortunately, a lot, and not maybe not unfortunately, it makes people, especially people who've been walking with Jesus a long time, very concerned because that just, they're not used to that. And so I always want to appeal to someone's sense of, look at what God's kingdom is doing. All throughout history, God has met all different people right where they are with all different sets of issues. Uh, I was listening to a story the other day from uh, the well-known evangelist, uh, Luis Palau, and he was preaching the gospel in, uh, at the time, communist Russia. And the head of the KGB, who had arrested one of the leaders who was helping put on this festival, was sitting in the front row. You know, and, and really what you realize is that God can meet anybody right where they are and God wants to do a work. And I think for us as the church, the people of God, we want to make sure that we are in lockstep with Jesus, being willing to be in the middle of the mess of seeing Jesus transform yes. people's lives. Is, is that what makes a lot of churches uncomfortable? Because this is something, even though this, this has been around for a long time, to identify this way now is, is a new kind of, of brokenness or sin, something the church is not used to dealing with. Well, I think for a long time, you know, there are, you know, kind of almost respectable sins within the church. Like someone can maybe be unkind and, and I, the Bible doesn't call it respectable. The Bible just calls it sin, but they're, you know, maybe you're not generous or maybe, you know, you're judgmental, but, but everyone's like that. But now when you're, when you see a, our culture has embraced, uh, all, you know, uh, these, what we used to call alternative lifestyles, now we just call them, this is who people are, you know, uh, our culture has embraced it and, and even promotes it and champions it. And now all of a sudden when that happens, the first response from the church is always to kind of recoil away. But now, you know, everybody, no matter what their areas of struggle is, uh, people want Jesus. People, no matter if they're uh, confused or whether they're transgender or whether they're, they're, they're uh, heterosexual, people want Jesus. And what's amazing is, is Jesus doesn't turn someone and say, away and say, listen, until you fix that, I, you, I, I can't be your Lord and Savior. I won't forgive you of your sins. Jesus never says that. So now the church is having to, to deal with things that maybe historically we haven't had to deal with. But I actually think it's a beautiful thing because it comes back down like Jesus received me just as I was. And he loved me too much to leave me that way. And my journey with Jesus now as a pastor and an author, you know, uh, it didn't start where it is today, but it started in the midst of a whole bunch of questions and issues that I was having. And I had a church family that was willing to, to uh, receive me as Jesus did and walk with me on that journey. And so it is a, it, it's the call of the church to be a, a redemptive entity, so to speak, uh, in this world as salt and as light. Well, in, in this case, this is a highly charged political question as well uh, when you're talking about tra transgenders because there's a, there's a risk involved with labeling that as, as brokenness or labeling, labeling something like that as sin when these people are saying in the, in the culture saying this is totally normal, we just haven't identified it yet, but it's totally normal. And so it's a politically charged area where the church can get themselves in some real hot water. Sure. And I mean, there's no doubt that in any generation, and if you look, if you read church history, this isn't the only generation where the teachings of Jesus and the culture were at odds with one another. And so I think the key for us is to always remember that there's really no us and them. There's just us and him. You know, we're people, God is perfect. None of us are except for Jesus. No human being is perfect except for Jesus. And God wants to do a work. And so for me, whether with, you know, there's just people and there's a God who wants to redeem people. And so 
for me, I always say like, for me as a, as a heterosexual male, like I still had brokenness in my own sexuality before I knew Jesus. I had all these, uh, mis- I made all these mistakes and all these things, I had all these wrong views. And uh, Jesus on the day that he saved me didn't show me everything that was wrong. He brought me on a journey and he began to purify my life. And so in a lot of ways, um, God is a God of holiness and a God of purity. And because he is that, he invites us to be made holy as he is holy and he wants to purify us just as he is pure. And and that is not something that God does uh, on the day of salvation every mistake I ever made was forgiven, but it didn't fix every bad habit that I had. It didn't change every thought immediately that I had. And that began a journey. And so I always tell people that, you know, there's just, it's not us versus them. It's not this kind of group or that kind. There's just people in need of a savior. And Jesus came to be that savior. And once somebody puts their faith and trust in him, then the spirit works in them from the inside. And that is a journey. And I, I could say as someone who's been walking with Jesus for 20 years, God's not done with me yet. I'm grateful that I'm not what I used to be. And I'm grateful that I'm not what I'm going to be. But today's another day to take a good step. Have you seen somebody travel that journey from uh, as a transgender to, to some end game that you say, this is, this is where this should end up, this is where it should be? Sure. I mean, you know, we have a number of people like that, both uh, people who are same-sex married and people who, who came in identifying as, as, as a gender that was not their kind of their birth gender and, and had been begun the transition and transitioned back. And, and I mean, we, we want to, you know, we have a tendency as a church to want to celebrate like we love the outcome, but actually God loves the process. And so for somebody who is at Crossroads today and, and they're transgendered, it's like the fact that they haven't taken all those steps yet. Our job as a church is to join them on the journey in the name of Jesus, point people to Jesus, and we trust Jesus by his spirit to do the work. It's really not the church's job to do the work. Our job is to proclaim the gospel and to love people. And as we do that, then God does his work. In, in the same way, you know, like there's things in my life, I'm not perfect by any stretch of the mean. And you can ask anybody, my, yes, my wife, my kids, the folks here at Crossroads, nobody expects me to be perfect, but in the journey, they're seeing me grow. And in a lot of ways, that's what God wants for us uh, in, with anybody, no matter what their area of brokenness might be, whether they think it's broken or not, God wants us to be able to embrace people where they are and and join them on the journey of Jesus transforming their lives. Team 44 created Viewpoint with Bob Placey to let everyone know that the Bible is still relevant today. Viewpoint is not only available on TV44's powerful broadcast stations and cable systems covering Northwest Ohio, but additionally, anyone can watch programs and exclusive bonus features on YouTube. And we've expanded Viewpoint's reach as you can now listen at work or in your car on the Viewpoint with Bob Lacey podcast. Would you like to help expand our reach? Then sign into YouTube with your account and subscribe. Do the same on your favorite podcast app. By subscribing, rating, and sharing Viewpoint content, you will help this life-changing media show up on more search engines as popular and trending. If everyone watching right now could do that, Viewpoint would become more visible worldwide to online viewers in places even missionaries can't reach. Help us today reach the world. Share Viewpoint with Bob Lacey today. If you like Viewpoint, we hope you support it financially. I'm Bob Placey. Thank you for joining me. Remember, you can share all the Viewpoint interviews you've seen today online at YouTube. And you can listen to the Viewpoint podcast on iTunes, Spotify, and anywhere you can listen to a podcast. <laughs>